This week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be checking out Grass Punks from Tom Brousseau. And World Peace is none of your business via Morrissey. I'm making it my business. Hello and welcome to another episode of Music Worth Buying. My name is TJR. I'm a musician and music writer. And my name is Robert Kinsler and I'm a music writer and a musician. And so, okay, we've got some albums we're both excited about. The other has not heard the other's album yet. Right. And so it's a big mystery. We'll see how we react. We'll see what we think. <laughs> and I'm going to start off with Tom Brousseau. Grass Punks on Dope. No, just Grass Punks. And this is not a punk album. This is a folk album. This is not an album about grass or cannabis or whatever you want to you know, whatever you want to say no this uh grass punks is from folk singer tom Brousseau. it's his seventh studio release and this is my first exposure to his music so i make no comparisons with any previous albums um while it has been a number of years uh since he's uh released an album this album was recorded in the space of just a couple days i think i think if, i'm correct me if i'm wrong but i think it was maybe only two days uh recorded in the home of Sean Watkins, who produced the album, mixed it, and also was the only other musician on the album. Hmm. Uh, Brousseau, of course, playing guitar, vocals, and Watkins doing uh, additional guitars, electric guitar, bass, mandolin, and harmony vocals. And this album would be very easy on first listen to just uh, say, oh yeah, this is a very nice kind of melancholy, it's raining outside, so I'm going to be indoors kind of album, you know. But there is a sly subtlety to the lyrics uh, that you may not catch at first unless you really pay attention. And there's also, I want to point out, and I think this uh, is one thing that really sets this album apart, there is a subtle um, quality to the musicianship. There's a lot more going on to the musicianship than you might think when you first hear it. There is some very precise, uh, nuanced, uh, but very uh, technical playing, in my opinion, going on. As a guitarist myself, I'm impressed with the musicianship on this album. Let me just say that. And so let's check out a track. Uh, this is the opening track off the album. Uh, it's called Cradle Your Device. Here we go. And that was Cradle Your Device by Tom Brousseau, uh, Grass Punks. And um, that song is about a, uh, a young man who is jealous uh, uh, about his girlfriend, uh, his lover. He is jealous because she is more interested in her cell phone than she is in him. And he can't get her to pay as much attention to him as she does her cell phone. <laughs> and so it's got to, and it's not real uh, over the head with its, mm -hmm. it's what it's about. It's very subtle the way it's the way it's worded. You kind of you really have to listen, and you kind of have to work at it a little bit to understand mm -hmm. what it's about. Um, and his songs are that way. Um, you know, you really, I mean, you can enjoy it on a level of just, oh, that's really pleasant sounding. You know, mm -hmm. I like the way the guitar interplay works between the two of them on yeah. that. The different textures that are going back mm -hmm. and forth between each other on this song, and you could just listen to it for its melody, mm -hmm. you know, and and the musicality of it. But there is this, you know, some very sly, subtle aspect to the mm -hmm. lyrics that you might miss, and you might even miss the musicianship too, because mm -hmm. it's not in your face. Yeah, but it's there. It's very technical. It's very precise. Uh -huh. And it's extremely well done. Yeah. Um, the song reminds me a little bit of Elvis Costello's uh, Watching the Detectives, uh -huh. which is about, which, you know, came out in the, um, I guess, late 70s, early 80s, uh, off his very first album, and was about a guy who was trying to get the attention of his girlfriend, make time with his girlfriend, but she's too busy watching uh, a crime drama TV show. And it kind of reminds me of that theme, thematically, anyways, even though musically mm -hmm. they're quite different, but that was the first comparison I made. Um, Packaging-wise, this album comes uh, very simply packaged. I do like the retro styling of the of the cover here, the way that looks, and it's just a, a what we call an, an eco wallet. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, no booklet, no lyrics, just just some uh, basic information, track listings, and and who did what and where. 
And uh, um, in a way, simple and to the point, just like the music is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but there you have it. There you go. And so uh, we'll check out one more track. This next track um, is, I think, probably one of the more sincere, maybe less sly songs, uh, at least as far as I can tell. I don't sense any, any, uh, any like um, subtle jabs, but it's, I think, a very sincere song, kind of a sweet song where the author is just basically reminiscing about his, um, his first kiss. Uh -huh. It's called Tammy. Here we go. I didn't know how to be I kind of felt like a fool She said I was the only boy she liked at school I was the only boy that she liked at school You know what I like about that um, is uh, it kind of recalls some of maybe the early McCartney albums. You know, I think really? in the early 70s where it has this immediacy. You hear that acoustic guitar. It's like you're in the room with that acoustic guitar and, uh -huh. and, the, and someone's singing the guitar and it's right to you where it's resonating in your ears and stuff. There's that kind of immediacy that you just don't huh. hear. At least I don't hear it on a lot of commercial recordings now. And I, and I like that. Huh. It's, it's, I hadn't... Hadn't thought of that myself. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, and I don't know why it kicked in, and I couldn't tell you if you have a gun to my head what McCartney song. I, it just kind of reminded me of some of maybe some of his early, early albums uh -huh. when he did his acoustic stuff. You just know? in the way it was recorded. Yeah, just in the way it was recorded, or just kind of the the what it does as far as the emotion and, and with the layers, how he's layered the acoustic guitar and the uh -huh. vocals. You vocals know? up in front. Yeah, like that. yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. it, it kind of you know. So good observation. But, but, yeah, I like that. That's I would that did not even occur. And I don't know so. why it occurred to me because he doesn't sound like McCartney, obviously. No, no, no he not doesn't. that. But just something about the approach or just what I'm hearing. Huh. And like I said, that's my first listen. But cool. yeah, I like that. Well, cool. I'm glad you did. So, what have you got for us? I, well, I, I know you said uh, that was not a punk album. This is definitely a punk album from uh, Morrissey. I mean, when I say punk, I don't necessarily mean in the music. In, in the traditional sense, this is in, not Green Day. This is not know, social. But this going. is this is somebody that it's no hold barred. His he is poking his finger in the collective eye of humanity here. Uh -huh. There's no corner of the universe that is off limits. I mean, uh, world peace is none of your business. I mean, the title track talks kind of about the overreach of the government. He even kind of. I think there's some part of the song where he basically says, "If you vote, you're you're kind of supporting supporting kind of the process, you know." Really? So, so it's it's uh, liberals are going to be offended, conservatives are going to be offended. Uh -huh. I mean, it just but you know what? There's just something about Morrissey that these songs just grab you. Uh -huh. This is his first studio album in five years, and he obviously has a lot to say on uh -huh. it. So. Why don't we do this? Let's listen to a little bit of Staircase at the University, and then okay. we'll talk about it. Sure. Yeah, okay. I'm curious now. Okay, you got it. Staircase at the university She threw herself down And her head split three And that is a staircase at the university. And I don't know what part of the song we're going to play, but you know, there's a part where they said she threw herself down the stair staircase and split her head open in three ways or something like that. And yeah, on one hand, you go, it's funny, but it's really not because it's talking. The underlying message is kind of like there's so much pressure. You know, if you don't get a, you know, three A's, you know, it's like I don't even know you, and it's like maybe the pressure that parents put on their children or something, you know. Like is that. this based on a real incident? Do you know, that, someone who did that, commit suicide because of pressure to for the grades and and then killed themselves. Is that what this is? This not based you, on? A you know, real I incident, don't, you know? I don't know. I think at least when or I listen just to the, a critique in general. Yeah, I may, to me, a lot of these things are just in general. I don't hear. Um, you know, they, they seem to just kind of lashing out at certain things in society. Uh -huh. I don't know if there are particular incidents or maybe he read something mm -hmm. or saw a news report or something like that. But, you know, he doesn't shroud his mm -hmm. his messages here in mystery. I mean, mm -hmm. they're out there. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, it's the, obvious what he, he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some songs that talk about, you know, if, if you do this, that means you're not a real man and stuff like uh -huh. that. You know, so obviously he's attacking a lot of things in society. And believe mm -hmm. me, we, we all know our society is far from perfect. Yeah. And sometimes it's 
great for a 55 year old Englishman to kind of kick us in the rear and say, hey, look at, you know, look what's going on here, you know. You know, so. when I reviewed, I want to interject you, when I reviewed, you know, Andy DeFranco's last album, I said, you know, I said, now, if you're the type of person who's offended by a liberal feminist espousing her views, then you probably shouldn't listen to this album. Right, and I've right. said, I'm not offended by any topic that a song is about mm -hmm. as long as you write a good song. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't heard enough of this to tell whether I like this or not, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. Can't really say. But I know you're a fan of Morris. Right. You're a fan of Smith. You must obviously like these songs and think they're good songs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the fact that the lyrics are not trite. Mm -hmm. I talked about that with Chicago's uh, most recent album, where uh, while I liked the me melody of the song America, which is the po a political song, they haven't done a political song in ages, I thought the lyrics that were too soapboxy, too trite right. sounding, uh -huh. they, did, you know, they didn't have any real meat. They just were kind of mealy mouth, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Like the rest of the song, though, but liked it musically. But uh, here, the lyrics are not mealy at all. Right. They're not. They're not. You know, it's not. It, it's it's full on teeth. It's not right. gumming a steak. It's just yeah. biting in. Right. That's exactly. And I, what it I does, do yeah. like this aspect of the lyrics yeah. that I've heard on this song. And I'm you're, from what you're telling me, the whole album is this way. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And this song, I've actually, and all the songs sound pretty different from each other. This song actually, as it turns out, probably sounds the closest to what people might call like the signature sound of the Smiths. Uh -huh. Other songs, you know, you'll hear a lot more, let's say, a Latin flavor or you know, more of a punk flavor or something like that. But um, you know, and and before we get too far, you know, the CD itself, the physical package is very, very simple. I mean, it has a title. You can see more of either, yeah, yeah Eco Wallet, and it just has a few basic notes about the album and, and, and mm -hmm. the musicians and that kind of thing. There's not a lot of detail, but again, you listen to the album, and I think you you pretty much know where Morrissey's coming from. Yeah. And uh, just musically, I want to say one more thing. Just based, you know, like I said, based on this track alone. Okay, I haven't heard anything else. Mm -hmm. um, well, like I said, I haven't heard enough to know if I even like this musically, honestly, right. to be honest. Okay. But the lyrics alone are enough to make me say, well. Even if I'm not going to like this album, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but I'm curious to hear the rest just because I want to know well, what else is he going to talk about right, in this exactly. album. Right, exactly. I'm yeah. just really like that intrigued yeah. to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, there's one song we're not actually going to play that. I think it's called um, Kick the Bride Down the Aisle. And, and my wife and I actually got a kick out of it because here uh -huh. we are married and he's kind of disparaging women that get married or something. But it, it is, it, but like I said, it, this That's album... That's his opinion th about this marriage. Will, this album will offend pretty much everybody. And yeah. He's an equal opportunity offender. But, you know, the, the great thing is about it is, is, you know, like you said in another episode on Jack White, he, he's somebody that's very interesting. He's he's continued to challenge his listeners and challenge himself over yeah. you know over many years of music making and uh, mm -hmm. I I'm it's glad that he's back with another album mm -hmm. you know after okay. five years so so what are we hearing next this next song uh, actually let's play a little bit and then we'll we'll talk okay. a little am I going to get ticked off after this song uh, you might okay, it's well, it's very possible so let's see all right let's find okay. out we'll find out let's see if I get mad <laughs> okay. In Barcelona, then someone told you. And you cheered, hooray, hooray, the bullfighter dies, hooray, hooray, the bullfighter dies, and nobody cries. And that is The Bullfighter Dies, which uh, I don't think there's any secret about what Morrissey's singing about yeah, in no. that song. No. It's out no. there. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know it's a, it's probably the shortest song on the album. It's a very short, you know, you don't might almost call it a ditty, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, conventionally because I think with a song like this, it literally I think the song was built around this is a message I want to get across, mm -hmm. and I think he does that very effectively. There's other songs like the one we previously heard a little bit of, uh, where I think the songs are more fully fleshed out. They have more, you know, more melodic elements or more kind of musical layers going mm -hmm. on because he has a great band behind him on this but um i thought it was important too to just you know you know he, he's obviously militant you know mm -hmm. vegetarian and, and has very strong views mm -hmm. and uh but the thing is i think you can say is his fans whether many of his fans probably don't agree with him on everything but you know it's like hey this is a unique artist and the world's yeah uh, you well, know a better place for having him in it bullfighting fans are not going to be happy with this song no, I, i'm sure that he doesn't really want to see another human being get killed. Right. I'm sure in in reality he doesn't. Yeah. But he's saying he's saying the bullfighter dies, you know, hooray the bullfighter yeah. dies. Yeah. Uh to get a point across in to the song. To get a song, point across exactly. You know, I don't believe that Ted Nugent actually endorses strangling 
your woman yeah, in, the, right. in the song Stranglehold. Right, exactly. You know, yeah, obviously um, not. Yeah. There was a line from, and you and you can't get more politically different than yeah, say Morrissey, yeah, obviously, yeah. than Ted Nugent. Right. Um, but I don't believe he thinks that you should strangle someone. He's uh, the line he said is, "I may perform violence. Uh-huh. I'm not advocating it." Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, and you were saying there's a song there where he talks about he thinks the people who vote yeah. are that, part of the a, problem. Well, that's a, the title track, just about the overreach of government, I think uh-huh. is kind of what he's addressing uh-huh. there. And like I said, it's it's almost every, and I and I couldn't go down the litany right now because I'd have to re-listen to it, but literally every song on here seems like it's trying to make a, a very direct point. He's angry you know, about something. Yeah, it feels yeah like. either angry or in, like I said, that's why I said it's kind of like a punk album in that way, yeah. that it's really just in your face and, and, uh, and it's very powerfully delivered. And the other thing I'll say about Morrissey here is although he's 55 now, he sounds... As mm-hmm. a singer, is great. I mean, mm-hmm. he his high notes. You know, he can go into a, a lovely falsetto. He's still a very great vocalist, and and has a unique, obviously has a unique sound and approach. Uh-huh. You know that that he we the world discovered in the Smiths, and he still has that element. Yeah. So yeah. okay, and you know, you were. I want to get back to that song real quick about you, know, you were talking about how uh, saying that people who vote are complicit with the go- are complicit yeah. with the government, and you know, I couldn't disagree with that more. Yeah. Voting is like this duty you have to take very yeah. seriously yeah. i take it very seriously right. i right. couldn't disagree with him more but i'm glad he's saying exactly what he's feeling he's not masking it yeah. he's not covering it up he's saying this is exactly where i stand we need more artists to just say unapologetically mm-hmm. this is how i feel be it morrissey be it ani defranco be it ted nugent right exactly you know um that they just just come out and say Boom, and I don't care. Yeah. Don't know if I'm going to like this one musically. I've never been into the Smiths or yeah. Morrissey, to be yeah. honest. Never been into the music. Uh-huh. Um, I would have to listen to it more. But I'm curious to hear it, just to hear, okay, what's he going to say about yeah. this? I'm just curious now to see, to just kind of feel the impact of that, how he's yeah. going to do this music. I'm interested in as a musician, as a songwriter, right. as a music fan, uh-huh. just to know, even if I only listen to it once and probably never listen to it again, yeah, I don't exactly. know, if I don't, if I don't like get into it musically yeah. enough to yeah. listen to it. And, so. I, and I think that's a good thing. I think that, uh, you know, if, if it, if, uh, music is you to challenge yourself or kind yeah. of think about the world in a different way. Then it's that's part of what what makes music. It shouldn't so all right. be safe. Yeah, it shouldn't all be safe. It can exactly. be fun. It can be a lot of fun, but yeah. it shouldn't all be safe yeah. necessarily. Yeah, and I agree with that. Yeah, that's oh, a cool. good, good point. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that in. Yeah. And that was interesting to to sample this. Yeah. And uh, and thanks for bringing in uh, Tom Brousseau yeah, too. Yeah, if Tom I'm Brousseau. pronouncing his name right, you yeah. are. I think yeah. you are. So. And if if it we're not, we'll hear from the label. His that's label. Right. They'll they'll be sure yeah. to tell us. That's good. I hope they do. <laughs> Anyways, though, we want to thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share the show with your friends and let them know what we're doing here. And as always, uh, under more info, you can link to the blog. And there you can link to more audio samples on Amazon. Listen to more audio samples. You can purchase and show your support for everybody involved in bringing this music to you. Until next time, my name is TJR. You can check out my music at tjrmusic.com. My solo reviews here on YouTube, here at the channel. And my name is Robert Kinsler, and you can read more of my work at ocregister.com and, of course, at musicworthbind.com. We'll see you next time. See you later, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>